hope you are doing well. Take a moment to pull yourself back from the keyboard. I've got my friend Matt Tuttle here from Tuttle Capital. First things first, Matt, it seems uh, interesting. The gamblers are back into the market. It seems some new uh, meme cryptocurrencies are coming about, but small cap, mid cap, uh, Asian sector stocks starting to almost act like biotechs. Give me your thoughts. What are you seeing? Yeah, and, and this happens all the time. I mean, anything that's a low flow that guys can get to move, eventually they're going to get them to move. You know, got to be real careful with any of this stuff. Um, you know, the, the guys who make money are obviously the guys who get in at the beginning, maybe get the middle of the move. What you do not want to be is exit liquidity for all those guys taking profits. And you know, unless you're in on the pump, it's very, very difficult to to be someone who's who's making money and not someone who's providing exit liquidity. So, you know, just be extremely careful if you're going to play in this stuff, you know, know what you're doing um, and, you know, position size accordingly. But, you know, this is not a fundamental, oh, my God, this is a great area of the market type of move. It's these are low floats. We can get a couple of guys and we can push it, you know, that type of thing. You know, and with that being the case, uh, we've seen a lot of people talking lately about the low flow within the major parts of the market overall. Do you believe that we may be getting into a, I'll call it 2016, 2017 situation to where pump and dump start to come back? I mean, the SEC was locking a lot of that down, but we have not seen too much commentary on. Do you think we may start to see uh, the mailing list and the pump and dumps coming back, at least for a short term? Oh, I mean, with, without a doubt. I mean, and, you know, that that's human nature. We're always going to have pump and dumps and, you know, and the, the pump and dumpers are always going to figure out, you know, a way to, to you know, beat the SEC. I, you know, the, the problem with regulators, I, I mean, you know, we need them. They do a good job, but they're also typically fighting the last war. So, you know, that you saw, you know, all that Atlas stuff. You know, you'd never had a pump and dump on Twitter before. So, you know, they were able to, and again, assuming that that's what happened, you know, I don't know that anything's been proven, but if the allegations are true, you know, they were able to get away with that for quite some time. I think, you know, one of the reasons being regulators weren't looking at Twitter for pump and dumps. It makes me wonder if we're going to see the uh, boiler rooms coming back on that. I want to pivot a little bit, though. And you guys had quite an accomplishment the other day. You were up over the CBOE on there. Matt, tell us a little bit about that. How was that experience going through for Tuttle Cap and the team of getting up there? Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we've done bell ringings on the NYSE, which is, you know, the granddaddy of them all. That's interesting. We've done the NASDAQ. We've never done the CBO before and ne never even been on the trading floor. What, what I found out is, I mean, they do, you know, a lot of options trades go through there, but the SPX and the VIX, those are their products. So every single S&P 500 and VIX option trade goes through that trading floor. So it was pretty cool to, to stand down there and, and see it. I actually tweeted, you know, anyone trading zero DTE on VIX and SPCX, I'm, you know, I'm watching your orders go through right now. And, you know, and, and seeing that was a lot of fun because really at the end of the day, there's there's not a lot going on on the floor of the NYSE anymore, nothing on the NASDAQ. So to be on the trading floor where actually stuff is happening, that was pretty cool. You know, and it's amazing how the trading environment has changed, but even Tuttlecap itself going through these different things, especially with uh, LGM, SGM as well, a lot of conversations around that. And uh, it makes a lot of people wonder, uh, without getting into too many details with things, uh, are you guys planning to bring anything else within the year? Yeah. So, you know, we filed for two R products, uh, you know, a week and a half or so ago, a 2X long, all of the ARC stuff, and a 2X short, all of the ARC stuff. We actually should have four filings coming up today, which will be interesting because I think it's the first time ever you're going to see two ETF issuers actually collaborate 
on something which you know I think is it, it it could be an interesting trend. You know, the ETF marketplace, as as you may not know, and your viewers may not know, it's dominated by the big guys. You know, yeah. the Black Rocks and the Vanguards, and there's not a lot left for smaller issuers. And historically, you know, the smaller issuers compete. What if we band together? So I, I think these products, when they come out, I believe will be the first time that's ever happened. Um, and maybe not the last. So we'll see. You know, that would be interesting as well to have some of the smaller issuers doing like, uh, for lack of a better term, an, an M&A sequence of things to where they're all getting together to collab and, and eventually become a, a bigger side of things to not necessarily compete with, but add some competition to the market there with the usual Black Rocks, iShares, et cetera. Uh, overall, do you, you have anything else interesting in the work? I mean, you guys are always giving some really good information on the white papers on TuttleCap.com there. Uh, what's some other things you have coming in the works? So stay tuned. We're, we're in talks on a couple of things that could be extremely interesting. Um, if it happens, it'll happen fairly quickly. Um, so we, we, we'll see. Hopefully within the next week or two, I'll have some more news for you. I love it. I love it. Now, Matt, I want to ask you last question on this one. As we're going into the May area, one, do you think it's going to be selling May and go away? And two, what's that uh, What's that sector you're really keeping an eye on if it isn't? So ask Jerome Powell. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I love it. We'll see what he's got to say on Wednesday. And, you know, again, the concern is going to be, I mean, what's he talk about? As far as rates going forward, does he mention pause? Um, does he change? You know, does he pivot off of his two percent target? Does he, you know, waffle on you know no cuts this year? I mean, all that. I mean, you know, I saw someone post something this morning. This week could be the most important week of the year. Maybe it is. You know, we'll see what he has to say. Um, you know, right now at these levels. I'd rather be short than long, but, you know, in, in the things we're watching, mega cap tech, consumer staples, I mean, that stuff is just ramped. I got to figure that's flight to safety and we'd be looking for places to short it. I'm not going to short a rising knife, but I'd be looking for that. But again, you know, Powell comes out, says, hey, we're pausing. Then, you know, we get bullish. I love it. I love it. All right, Matt, if people want to find out more, where can they uh, keep track of you guys? Yeah, so our website, tuttlecap.com, uh, also krameretfs.com for the Kramer ETFs, and we're on Twitter at Tuttle Capital. I love it. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, rub the links in the description below. Matt, I look forward to talking with you after this Fed decision. Let's see what kind of wackiness hits the market on that one. But that being said, have a good week, and I look forward to talking with you again on the next one. All right, you too.